you'll see I have uh, a node here that's been disabled, but we'll get back to that in a minute. As we all know, DaVinci Resolve is a fantastic color correction system. Back in the 1990s, I worked at a VFX company in Hollywood called Planet Blue, and we had a million dollar DaVinci Bay dedicated to color grading commercials. What I'm saying is, color in DaVinci has been an industry gold standard for decades. Same goes for 3D tracking with synth eyes. The nice thing about this combo is that you can write out 3D LUTs from Resolve and load them in synth eyes. So I thought I'd do a little detour here and show you how. This is that disabled node we had before in color. Uh, I'm going to re-enable it. And hey, look, hmm, it's uh, a little nicer looking. It's got some higher contrast. I've retained some of the detail in these highlights that have gone all out of control. But I've done that through this little S-curve that I built. Uh, and I can lift the mids a little bit if I decide. There should be a little bit more in there. And uh, let's pull up a little bit more on these darks. But I've kind of clipped off the bottom here because there's nothing down there. And we can see that there's a bit of detail in these highlights. So that's why I created that, that nice little S-curve. Let's, let's do a little bit more to it. Let's go over here and let's turn up the saturation just a bit more. Oh yeah, there we go. That, that looks nice. That looks nice. Let's play that. So cool. And that's playing in real time. Um, this is the sped up plate, of course. Very nice. Nice little color correction we've created. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save that out as a LUT. If you right click on this right here, you can see generate LUT. And you can see 17 point cube and 33 point cube, 65 point cube. We're going to write out the 17 and 33 point cubes at this point. So let's go to our set survey, common, project files, what? And we're going to say location one survey mid 17 point cube. Save. Replace. Done. Let's generate that LUT again, but this time we're going to do a 33 point cube just so you can see the difference in synth eyes. And hit save. Great, replace. So now let's open this footage in synth eyes. I'm going to go to the image preprocessor and I'm going to look at levels. And here is where we can choose a LUT. So there are a bunch of built in LUTs. But we're going to open our LUTs. Let's load our 17 point cube first. Open. Look at that. Lovely. It's beautiful. So look at this. This, this is nice. Now, what you'll notice here is that there's a, there's a little hesitancy in this because it's taking some time to process the frames. If you had a machine with a lot of RAM on it and, and you wanted to ch choose a different LUT, you would spend all of this processing time caching frames. Let me load a different LUT. Let me load the 33 point LUT and see if it's, if it looks different. 33 point cube. Okay. Looks identical. Uh, honestly, for 3D tracking, I wouldn't really particularly worry about having 65 point LUTs or 33 point LUTs. So that's how you do it. That's how you load LUTs in synthize. Because using LUTs in synthize is a fairly processor intensive endeavor, you may find yourself spending quite a bit more time recaching frames when changing from one LUT to another. I just make color correction presets in the image preprocessor in synthize and use the basic color correction controls, which render pretty fast. 